Why is this Ukrainian jet chasing its own missile? It looks reckless, but it's actually part of the plan. That's a Neptune R360, an anti-ship missile moving at over 600 miles per hour. But why would a fighter jet risk flying so close? Is the jet guiding the missile? No, it's protecting it. By flying behind and around the missile, the Su-27 jams enemy radar, making it harder for ships to lock on and shoot down the missile. The jet also acts as a shield, ready to intercept threats or confuse enemy missiles targeting the Neptune. The R-360 is Ukraine's homegrown ship killer, based on an old Soviet design but completely re-engineered. It has a 170-mile range, sea-skimming ability, and a warhead built to shred steel hulls. But warships have layered defenses, radar, jammers, and anti-air cannons ready to swat down incoming threats. So one missile alone might not make it. That's why it's not flying alone. Modern warships rely on phased array radars to track incoming threats. The Su-27's EW pods emit powerful radio frequency noise, essentially blinding enemy radar dishes in the missile's flight path. Without a clear radar picture, surface-to-air missiles struggle to lock on. Next, the jet acts as a human shield. If an adversary launches an interceptor, the Su-27 can dive in and force the defender to choose. Target the fighter or the missile. From the enemy's perspective, it's chaos. And that chaos buys the missile time to survive. Now here's what makes this even more insane. The Su-27 isn't just fast, it's one of the most maneuverable jets ever built. It was the first operational fighter to perform the Cobra maneuver a stunt where it pitches up to 120 degrees mid-flight and still recovers. Why does that matter? Because tailing a missile at sea-skimming altitude requires insane control. Just a gust of wind or a radar glitch, and this move becomes a mid-air collision. Only a jet like the Su-27 could pull this off. This isn't entirely new. During World War II, kamikaze escorts used chaff dispensers to protect incoming bombers. But marrying a high-speed airframe with a cruise missile in this way is unprecedented and uniquely Ukrainian. Flying a supersonic jet barely feet from your own missile leaves zero margin for error. One miscalculation and your debris in the sky. But in contested waters, that extra layer of protection can mean the difference between a successful strike and a dud. A dogfight without bullets just electronic warfare, split-second piloting, and precision-guided fury. The age of the missile fighter escort has dawned. Or has it? Because here's the twist. This wasn't a combat mission at all. It was a test. The Sukhoi was following the missile to film it in flight, especially its control surfaces. That bright orange paint? It's not a warhead, it's a tracking aid. And the biggest surprise? This wasn't Ukraine, it was Russia testing their systems years earlier. So what looked like cutting edge tactics was actually old footage of test range choreography. Still, the idea is out there. And with modern warfare evolving fast, a missile fighter escort might not stay experimental for long. What do you think? Brilliant innovation or too risky?